Right, so now I'm going to restart the Mac. Press the power button. There's the chime. Ah, right, okay. Um, right, so I've got a problem. I forgot about Grub. I won't be able to find a known file system. Yes, I forgot about that. Grub needs to be reinitialized because it's um, basically on a different partition, so new data needs to be written to the... Um, to the EFI firmware to let it know what partition to look at. So I've powered off the Mac. I've got to push the USB back in and power it up again. And try and get it to boot again. from the USB. Okay, that's better. <clears throat> so again, just got to wait for the rescue CD, if you like, the boot CD, the live CD, or USB to boot up. And what I'm going to have to do here is to get the um, Linux from scratch page up. Go to the um, LFS book, read online, and I need the part where we mount the virtual file systems. So back to the Mac, I'll close that window, oh, use the right cursor, <coughs> use the right mouse rather. So I'll shut that down, get the terminal up again, just set my preferences. Okay, and now I'm going to become the root. And what I need to do next is to mount the root partition, SDA2, uh, and to mount, this can be anywhere, it could be mount, uh, mount LFS or uh, just the mount will do. And mount, I'll mount the EFI partition as well onto boot. EFI so now what I need to do is to well, I can't alt tab can I because it's the only window I need to go back to the browser and mount these virtual file systems the first one I need to do now obviously there's no dollar LFS this is just going to be forward slash MNT so I'll do mount minus v minus minus bind slash dev onto slash mnt slash dev. Right, okay, I need to sort the internet connection out as well. Uh, right, wrong cursor. Get rid of that. 
that. Uh, right. So that's mounted. And then I've got to do these other virtual file systems as well. I'm not sure if they're all needed, but if I do them all, then there's less chance of any problems from occurring. So dev PTS onto MNT dev PTS. And then the next one is proc. So this one's slightly different. It's mount minus VT proc proc onto mount proc. Yep, that's worked. And sys and sysfs sysfs and finally run which is a tempfs. directory, uh, file system, sorry. So that's done. So um, I guess I should check this. I'm not sure if this will have any bearing on anything, but let's see if there's anything there. So ls minus la slash mnt slash dev slash shm. So it is there. If, let's test if it's there first of all, as the right type it's mentioning there, minus H, not sure what it is. Uh, let's see if this works. Right, it's not echoing anything, so it's not that particular type, so we don't need to do the make the command that's in the browser here so that's fine so let's enter the truth so we've got to type this all in unfortunately we can't um, copy and paste so user bin n minus i home equals for slash root term equals dollar term Okay, bear in mind that the keyboard is defaulted to US keyboard. Uh, right, I need to shrink this because I won't be able to see what I'm typing. Uh, again, the wrong cursor, the wrong mouse I'm using there. So let's just... like that okay so I'm up to term ps1 equals single quote LFS truth backslash u colon backslash w backslash dollar space single quote path equals forward slash user slash bin colon forward slash user slash s bin forward slash bin forward slash bash minus minus login and if you remember we don't need the plus h um, in fact I've actually shown you the wrong part here the true command we should be using is um, where is it? Is it in here? Yeah, it's this one here. You can see it's identical apart from the plus H is missing. So that's that. So now we need to go back to Beyond Linux from scratch. So if we get one of these tabs up, let's do a new private window. Put that over here. And we need to go to the grub 
section. For the UFI, where is it? There it is there. So we need to go to this link here, use Grub to set up the boot process. And scroll down and Right, we need to do this command next to mount the air 5 rs So, oh, can't. <laughs> can't copy and paste, of course. So I'll have to type that in. <sighs> I clicked it again. Right, so mount point four slash sys forward slash firm where EFI EFI vars mount mount minus V minus T EFI vars EFI vars forward slash sys firmware EFI yeah, five hours. It looks like, and that hasn't been mounted. Unknown file system type here, five hours. It says just behind there, which right. I'm not sure if that's going to be a problem or not. should have been booted into EFI VAR so it should be there. Yes, it is there. So it's the file system it doesn't recognise. Let's have a look at the one under mount as it is at the moment. There's nothing there. Let's try this. We can mount it actually. Let's do um, mount minus A. Right, yeah, that's worked because we've got um, in the FS tab, we've got an EFI entry there, and for some reason that's worked. Whereas the command line that I typed in didn't for some reason. Have I spelled anything wrong? No. Um, but you can see if I just do mount. Oh. You can see that the EFIs has been mounted. So if I do ls minus cell on sys firmware EFI EFI vars. You can see all those um, UUIDs, those those files or links, whatever they are, are actually visible now inside the truth, which is the important bit. So now let's scroll down. Uh, here, and what we need to do is to rerun this command. So all this work we've done rebooting, setting up the virtual file systems is to enable us to run this command successfully and what this will do is to rewrite a new signature into the EFI partition which um, allows Grub to boot successfully to the 
boot partition because we renumbered it. So it was trying to look for a file system on uh, SDA3. Well, all SDA3 has got now is a swap partition. There's nothing there that it could boot from. So let's now do this command grub install minus minus boot loader id equals lfs minus minus recheck no error reported so that's good uh, we've got both these uh, messages come up installing on an x8664 platform and installation finished no error reported so that's good so now if we run the EFI boot manager just to list what's there you can see the boot current is zero so it will boot again Linux from scratch next time but it also still knows about the Mac OS X well because OS X is not there anymore <clears throat> we can actually delete them so let's look to see how we can do that if we type EFI boot manager with the help option we can find the options for deleting so it looks like it might be option dash capital B so let's try that so let's just get a list of the partition numbers up again if I boot manager minus B and won't get rid of 80. Let's do one at a time rather than try to do them all at once. You must specify an entry to delete to see the B option. So the B option is the option, this is probably a safety device, where you specify the boot number. So you can see you've got to specify the minus B with the boot number and then the B command actually tells EFI boot manager to delete that boot number. So we specify minus B plus lowercase minus B with the boot, boot number which is 80. And you can see it's printed up the new um, options. And kindly for us, it's also deleted the 80 from the boot order. So it saves us having to redesignate that. So let's do the same for the other Mac OS X boot option. And there we go. So we've now got a minimal EFI boot. And um, we've also reinitialized the booting um, data in the EFI for LFS. So in theory this should now work. So I'm hoping it will do. Let's get rid of that. Let's come out of the root. Let's do U-mount um, is it EFI vars? I can't remember what it's called now. Let's just remove back everything that we've installed our firmware sys you can see how much of a pain this is not having a browser native to the system you're working in uh, so sys firmware EFI EFI vars so that's good so now we can come out of the truth and we should be able to do U mount minus R do V as well to see what's happening. Let's unmount everything on the mount directory. Yeah, everything's unmounted correctly. Let's do a mount command. You can see the last thing on there is this GVFSD fuse. So that's something the Endeavor OS has installed. So we're safe to shut down now. And as before, once it's shut down, I'll remove the USB and restart it. So the USB is removed, power on the uh, Mac, got the chime, just wait for the grub menu to appear. And got the menu, so I press enter and uh, unfortunately it's come back with an error saying can't find the disk HD7 GPT-2. Well I know for a fact it's the right partition, so that tells me that maybe something's happened with this strange uh, numbering system that Grub sees due to the um, non-standard EFI 
firmware that the Apple uh, uses, or not the firmware as, as much as the system that it uses. It's a non-standard EFI system. So what I'm going to do, it's gone back to the menu. I'm going to press C to get a grub command prompt up. Uh, so I'm in the grub shell. And what I'm going to do first of all is to type in set space root equals open bracket. If I press tab, it comes up with two options, HD0 and HD1. It's also auto typed HD1 into my set root equals command. So after that HD, I'm going to put in zero to look at the first hard disk to see if that's the hard disk I want. Press tab again it comes up with a close bracket so that tells me straight away that that's not the right device because our hard disk has got three partitions on it so I'll rub out the close bracket and the zero and I'm going to type in HD1 and press tab this now gives me a load of information I can see that there's an EFI partition and an EXT partition and a third partition so I'm going to now press comma and press tab and it auto fills GPT I want GPT-2 because that's the second partition with the root file system on. Press tab again and then press enter and it just it doesn't respond in it with anything but it accepts the command, there's no errors or anything. The next thing I need to do is to tell it to load the kernel. To do that I type in Linux space forward slash. If I press tab I can see all the um, directories or all the files on the root partition of SDA2. So now um, I need to type, because I haven't got a separate boot partition, I need to type in boot. So it says Linux forward slash boot, press tab, it will give me another forward slash, press tab again, and I can see the um, kernel file name there, vmliners 5.13.12 lfs hyphen. Uh, 11.0. So if I type VM and press tab, it will auto complete it for me. I then need to type in RO for making the file, the, the image read only, the disk read only at boot time. And then type root equals forward slash dev forward slash SDA2 because um, SDA2 is our root partition. Press enter, it accepts that. And now I type in boot and hopefully. Yeah, it says booting in blind mode, that's not a problem. And yes, I'm now getting um, a boot, as you can see, which has just appeared on the screen. So if you remember, it was HD1 that uh, booted, so that's the bit that's changed. So if I log in as root and edit the boot grub.cfg, uh, grub, sorry, grub grub.cfg, and I'll just get the cursor to make it more obvious. It's this bit here that has changed. So that's because we've deleted those two Apple EFI entries. Uh, I don't know how it works, but it's obviously changed this. So strangely, it's not HD0. It's got to be changed to HD1. So change that to a 1. That should be all that I need to change. Everything else is correct. Press Escape and colon save that and I'm going to do control alt delete and reboot and this time it should come up automatically without having to do any um, manual typing so as, as before you won't see the booting happening but I'll just commentate as it happens so I've just had the chime the screen light has just come on Right, I've now got a proper boot menu, and I press enter, and yes, it's booting straight away. I've got the four penguins up, they flashed up very quickly, so I know I've got all four cores activated in the kernel, and as you can see, it's booted successfully.